Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. If you notice the buzzing sound they hear in the background, well, that's the new AC that I got. And I'm going to show you right now. Yes, uh, this is the 8,000 feet GE AC. I just set it up to 67 at low cool. So that way it can cool my entire room. So I don't have to feel very hot. I mean, it's been 98 degrees so far, all this month, and I want this room to be as cool as possible. Yeah, you can see this long tube right there that connects directly to the window. And we had to use electronic tape to cover it up, and that's the way it picks up all the air all the way down here. Uh, we actually have another AC like that too that's very similar. But it's for my sister because she didn't have an air conditioner. And I know behind it is the old AC. That's the Gold Star. You can see these two dials right there. Yeah. But it's been unplugged. And why, you may ask? Well, what happened was, I, the room got so hot, overheated, felt like an oven in there. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't even breathe very well at this point. I try to turn it up at high cool, even a medium fan and medium cool, so it wouldn't create any problems. But suddenly, um, the water started leaking all the way down to the floor, and it's permanently damaging it. Yes, because seeing that this is a wooden floor, I mean, if water picks up over it, it's going to start damaging it. It's going to cause the, the floor to get all bent and out, out of shape, creating all these bubbles and bumps everywhere. It was a mess. I had to mop it completely. I had to clean all that stuff. I had to use paper towels. I even had to use the bleach bottle, uh, the bleach spray bottle, which is the Clorox, to clean all that stuff so it doesn't smell, get all moldy and everything. That's how bad it was. And I, I just had it. We had to get a new AC right away so we won't have this problem ever again. And the AC is also a roller too so you can move it around. Um, so that was kind of the case and if it wasn't for that I wouldn't be able to do any videos for a while. So that's why it became such a problem. Uh, anyway, uh, but back to that. Uh, I decided to do a Peanuts review since I am wearing my Snoopy shirt, my Joe Cool Chill Out shirt. <laughs> I definitely need to chill out. I mean, I can't stand this heat any longer. And this is a, a 20th primetime special that aired on CBS on October 24, 1980, simply called Life is a Circus, Charlie Brown which is where Snoopy joins in the circus for show business after he fell in love with a beautiful poodle named Fifi. That's right, Snoopy's love interest, as you may have spotted her in Snoopy's Getting Married, Charlie Brown. Yeah. But this is, of course, the first special that we get to see her. And it actually won an Emmy for Outstanding Animated Program. Yeah, it's one of the few specials that actually earned it. I mean, most of the specials that we had that aired on CBS in the 60s and 70s, I mean, they often get nominated. And that's how it became part of the Emmy Honored Collection DVD. <laughs> yeah. um, I didn't actually see this special until it aired on Nickelodeon. Uh, I actually read the book, though, uh, when I was um, at the library at elementary school, and I was actually curious to check this out someday, too. But I had to pick this up um, at the library so I could start reading any time, because I love to read all the Peanuts game, you know, comic strips, and all these books that are based on these specials alone to see the difference. So, yes, I, I started reading it before... I watched the special to come in action. Yeah. And I also taped it too. Uh, part of the uh, You're on Nickelodeon Charlie Brown that they aired. So I wanted to check it out. And 
I like it. I mean, it's not as good as most of the specials we had, but they did what they could. It's the first time we get to see Snoopy uh, doing something for a change. And it's nice to know that at least he got a love interest. So, here we go. It stars Michael Mandy as Charlie Brown, Brent Hauer as Pepper and Patty, Shannon Kahn as Marcy, Kristen Fullerton as Lucy Van Pelt, Rocky Wiley as Linus Van Pelt, Christopher Donahue as Schroeder, Casey Coulson as Polly, you know, the trainer, and Bill Melendez as Snoopy. It's created and written by Charles M. Schultz, and it's directed by Phil Wilman. The special begins following Snoopy's doghouse, which Snoopy is sleeping. He begins to overhear some music coming around. It turns out that there's a circus in town. As the train pulls up, you hear the music, and somehow the rest of the team were unpacking so that way they get everything set up. And when Snoopy came around, he spotted all the circus animals, such as giraffes, elephants, lions, tigers, and bears. Oh my! <laughs> Yeah, a Wizard of Oz reference. Uh, but most of all, he did spotted free poodles, uh, joining in by their dog trainer, a girl named Polly, and Snoopy eventually falls in love with one of them that's named Fifi. And as he already, you know, dancing around, falling in love, you know, <laughs> Polly just took Snoopy for the ride, so now he'll be able to perform all the acts for the circus. But the following day, Pepper and Patty call Charlie Brown to tell him that all the students are given a day off at her school so that way they can go see the circus. But Charlie Brown tells her that he does the same here at his school so they're also given the day off and they're already headed off to the circus right away. They grab their tickets, their popcorn and cotton candy which Pepper and Patty Poor cotton candy at uh, Charlie Brown's. Yeah, blah. And they headed off into the circus tent to watch their performance. As the kids, with Charlie Brown and his friends, you know, Linus, Lucy, um, Marcy, and Schroeder to join, they all watch all the performances, including the dog gag, which they recognize Snoopy immediately where he had to be wearing a blue bowl, acting like he's a girl, but he's not. So he tries to perform, but he was untrained permanently. He had trouble doing a backflip, and he was already getting pretty clumsy and becoming a comic relief, but under the commands of Polly, he had to take the sleigh to take those free poodles who had to perform their backflips and other stuff to train exactly as perfectly as possible. Charlie Brown, on the other hand, felt very upset because we know that it's his own dog and how, he, and how on earth did he somehow get involved in show business as he discovered when he should be like staying at home, guarding the house, you know, eating his supper dish and taking good care of everything the way Charlie Brown taught him to. Um, anyway, so Later that evening, Charlie Brown noticed that Snoopy has returned home. He was feeding him with his supper dish. And suddenly, he decided to go all the way to where the circus is at. That they, as they were getting ready to pack up so they can get ready to the next town. So they can perform over there. And they took Snoopy inside the circus train as Charlie Brown just noticed and that's when he thought that he was completely dog napped completely so of course Snoopy inside the circus train falling asleep just getting ready to go and just following around with Fifi and the rest of the animals yeah I mean Charlie Brown was feeling very sickened about that his dog was already in love and everything happened. 
Therefore, Polly had gave him the name for Snoopy, Hugo the Great, which that means he'll become a superstar and be able to train him to, to be part of the dog yak, you know, doing all the backflips and how to ride a unicycle, especially on the high rider. Yeah, and that was going to be the most dangerous stunt of them all. But that's not as dangerous as the trapeze act, which they're going to perform. And that's what they did too, uh, where Snoopy and Fifi were performing the trapeze act, you know, swinging around, hanging around with each other. And you could tell that Fifi was already scared when she was afraid to grab onto the, the swinger. But no matter what, they, they had to do a lot of training to get it right. And that's what they were doing. Me, While Charlie Brown was already feeling this upset because, because he couldn't understand why did he join the circus in the first place, well, Linus suddenly was no help by giving him the advice of how, how the, a dog like Snoopy would get into such acts like that. But... Which, of course, also leads to the, as you already heard already, because I mentioned it twice in those two specials, or actually one movie and one special. Yeah, Snoopy Come Home and Snoopy's Reunion, which is also part of the, the January 30th, 1972 comic strip on how the Charlie Brown got Snoopy. So I don't need to mention it again, because we already know. Suddenly... Lucy had declared that Snoopy isn't coming back, obviously. So she boards up his doghouse by placing the, the sign, Premise Condemned. Yeah, premises Condemned. Yeah, Lucy's totally full of herself. But what do you expect? She's Lucy. Therefore, Polly was decided to do the act, which is the trapeze. It became a success for both of them. However, that's where cruelty lies ahead when Colonel uh, Strong, who's the owner of the circus, you know, making phone calls for Polly to see how Hugo, with the Snoopy, is doing with Fifi. Well, it looks to me like they're going to perform their next act only to make matters worse is that they're going to be and I can't believe I'm going to I can't believe I'm actually hearing this or even saying it they're going to be color dyed with pink that's why Polly had set up the entire tub filled with food coloring so they're going to match the pink coloring for both Snoopy as Hugo and Fifi. So at that point on, Polly just took Snoopy and just dragged him and drenched him into the pink dye. And then next, she was going to do the same for Fifi, but Snoopy refuses and was ready to attack her and just and eventually drop her down into the tub of pink dye. And they both ran away as fast as they can all the way to the bus stop so that way he'll be able to leave town with Fifi together but Fifi was given some second thoughts and eventually changes her mind very quickly this was a bittersweet ending right there and it looks to me like Fifi rather be going all the way to the circus to be with her friends rather than being with Snoopy and that's where he felt very broken hearted as Fifi left. And he took the bus. He came back home as soon as possible at night, took a shower to wipe all of that pink dye. Yeah, Charlie Brown overheard. And then he just went back to the kitchen to make himself a sandwich with a glass of milk. Already feeling very sad because he couldn't stop thinking about Fifi. Well, after that, he just finished up his sandwich and a glass of milk and head off straight to bed. And he discovered his doghouse being boarded up. Got furious that he had to take it off as soon as possible 
and then he turns on the neon lights that says Hugo the Great right there <laughs> so yes um, I said before I like the special despite of its problems that it got but I guess we can see why I mean I know circuses isn't something we admire for but I know people do love going there to watch all the performance acts and how harder they had to train to get things right you know doing all these uh, acrobatic moves you know such as somersaults and all this other stuff that they're doing you know they like they had to go through the trapeze act you know they had to go for all these other animal training acts and you know they have clowns there they had all this other stuff everywhere around that's that sort of thing and the fact that Snoopy in this special becoming a superstar is really something and and the fact that he gets his love interest Fifi the first time we ever got to see her and I, I love those moments too and I love how beautiful it looks and I love the animation and I love how they blend in with the the music together by you know Ed Bogus you know throwing in the uh, the familiar circus theme um, that you often hear it's great um, but yeah the problems I do have and I know we all would have is the fact that it does have a bit of cruelty in there it's not easy having to watch a dog even though this is a, an animated cartoon so it's not real we also know that it's escapism was that it's always we always feel like it, it's kind of hard to watch both Snoopy and Fifi performing all these dangerous acts you know having Snoopy performing in a unicycle on a high wire or having to see you know Fifi you know, already being frightened same goes with Snoopy to perform those acts and the fact that they're both being forced into it I mean that that is just totally wrong in a way but I, I understand I mean they're not human but I would imagine how that that's gonna feel for everyone but that's always the case um, so but hey it's nice how they did it and I and I and of course I would say the worst scenes though was when <clears throat> when both Snoopy and I know Fifi was going to be being forced into being drenched in pink dye because of Colonel S Strong, which might as well be called Colonel Stupid. I mean, God, if I was a circus owner, I would never tell them to be dyed in pink or any other color because that is animal cruelty right there. Yeah. But, okay, I don't want to turn this into another soapboxy thing. All right. I mean, you know, PETA has always been the most manipulator of all of, of all these uh, organizations for taking good care of animals. But in reality, they just they force people into this, so they have to join this situation here. And no one wants to deal with that because, you know, they're a bunch of liars. Okay, okay, I don't want to, again, now I'm starting to feel like I'm over the place with that. Um... I've never been to the circus, though. I almost wish I had. I, I know my family isn't really much of a circus uh, types uh, for themselves. And I, I mean, I know my mom is afraid of clowns. I'm not. I, I know um, my sister isn't really interested in watching animals uh, getting treated this way. I understand that too. I don't like seeing animals getting treated like crap either. But it's always nice to see what these animals are doing. But it's as dangerous as it could be. You know, having to train a lion, a tiger, and even the, an elephant. That sort of thing. Um, but the best part of them all was having to watch all the uh, all the acts that uh, that they had to perform. Like again, the trapeze, you know, the acrobats. All this other acts that they had to do that's so hard. You want to believe how impressive that they had to work on. And that's what makes circus fun. You know, I mean, you'd just be amazed at how they did all that. 
I mean, haven't wa if you had to watch this at Circus Vargas, and we have Circus Vargas uh, around, or the fact that we have um, Ringing Brothers and Bartim and Bailey, which now that's been gone, but they last a lifetime. Yeah. Hey, especially if you had to watch Dumbo, too. I mean, when you had to watch uh, an elephant uh, performing all these acts, who's a outcast, you know, I guess that's how we see it. But anyway, but with the reaction here of the special, there are people who don't like it, and that's cool, to each their own. But for those who do love it, or like it, like I do, at least you do have the respect that you need. Because we don't want to turn this into yet a mindless blog, which that's what happened two years ago on the internet. And I know because I had to follow this on Facebook. And I had to share it to everyone when they had to tack on one peanut special that didn't deserve it. Because it is a harmless family special for everyone to watch. Was when they attacked a Charlie Brown Thanksgiving for its so-called racism. I mean, I know originally, though, they had a protest on how uh, Snoopy and Woodstock were having their Thanksgiving dinner, and they thinking this was going to be bird cannibalism, uh, for those who know about that one. I mean, Lee Mendelssohn um, didn't want this to be occurred, but at that point on, they, they had to solve it, because this was Schultz's idea to actually carry that. But I thought this whole argument involving what was going on focusing on Franklin, which I know Pepper and Patty invited him to join in, just because he had to sit on the chair that Snoopy actually had a fight with. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It's so out of place. I mean, they're just doing it because for my rebuttal, they're just sitting on their computer, on their easy chair, becoming one of those keyboard warriors just so they can save their lives. And everyone, and then they have to fall into it, being manipulated by these guys. My advice, don't listen to those people, because they're full of it. They totally are. They're just ruining good shows and movies just to make you look like an idiot. A total fool. You know, real people these days can understand and listen and have respect. Not something this mindlessly insulting. So, I know, I had to go on topic on that one, but that's what happened back in 2018, and that was totally unfair for a holiday special. I can't believe people could be so cruel. Anyway, I know. It has nothing to do with the circus special we have, but it is Charlie Brown. It's, it is Peanuts, so it's part of that topic. But that's for sure. But the fact is, though, Life is a Circus Charlie Brown is a good special. Not as great as all the other ones, but it's still worth watching. And I'm going to give it... Three and a half stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.